Hello, this health talk is about the blood type diet. Please remember that I am not a doctor, a dietitian, a nutritionist, or otherwise a medical professional or scientist. I am merely an educated man learning as much as I can about health and sharing it with you. Please always consult an appropriate professional before you make a change to your diet. And please remember that doctors are not trained at university about nutrition. They have to learn it on their own. Okay, so the blood type diet theorizes that based on your blood type, A, B, A, B, and O, plus the rhesus, which is minus and plus, um, or positive and negative, that will determine what kind of food is best for you to eat. Um, and you can look online for this information. It gives very, um, well, not, not exhaustive lists of what should be eaten and what should be avoid, avoided, but fairly decent uh, extensive lists, lists are, are available if you look around. The problem with this diet is it completely ignores the fact that there are many things at play within the body that affect diet but have nothing to do with your blood type. So for example, the microbiome, which is in your which is in your gut down here, living in your uh, intestines, is full of different kinds of bacteria that help us to digest lots of different kinds of foods. Plus there are enzymes that our body produces that have nothing to do with blood type, such as lactase for lactose, which is in dairy products. And there's another one for digesting meat, and so on and so forth. And these are ir irrespective of blood type. And the list goes on and on and on of different things in our bodies that help to determine what's good for us and what's bad for us. Now, please keep in mind that everybody is different. There are genetic variants and active and deactivated uh, gene expressions that may have an impact on what can and can be eaten, in addition to which there are diseases and viruses and stuff like that that can actually cause you to lose the ability to digest certain kinds of foods, sometimes de uh, in a way that's deadly. So there are also allergies. Now, getting back to the deathly inability to digest. I used to know a lady who had been bitten by a uh, Lone Star tick. And that tick happened to carry a disease that causes your body to be an unable to produce the enzyme to digest meat. And she told me if she were to accidentally in, um, eat any kind of a meat, it could kill her. It could put her into anaphylactic shock. So she no longer eats any meat. Um, whether that includes dairy or not, I don't think so, because that would be a different enzyme, specifically lactase. Um, but, yeah, so there are a lot of considerations when it comes to what is good for you to eat and what is bad for you to eat. But in general, if we talk about the vast majority of people, <clears throat> the rules are pretty much the same. So most people should be able to eat pretty much anything, including insects uh, and, you know, animals and, and plants. There are some people who shouldn't have gluten because they either have gluten intolerance or they have celiac disease, which is even worse. There are some people who can't eat other things like lactose. Uh, an estimated 75%, I believe, of the world is actually lactose intolerant to one degree or another, including myself. I'm about 100% lactose intolerant. Um, and so what I'm getting at here is the human body is very complex. And ultimately, if you want to have good health, you want to lose weight, there are two things you need to remember. Sorry, we'll make that three. The first one is, is the way you eat should be your lifestyle as it is now. So when you change the way you eat to lose weight or have better health or, or be a better athlete or whatever, that needs to be your lifestyle. That needs to be the way you eat all the time. It should not be 
uh, I'll just do it today, not tomorrow kind of thing. The uh, second thing to remember is that you should be, as much as is possible, avoiding processed foods and eating what are called whole foods, which are foods that have been processed very little or not at all. Um, and third of all, you should be avoiding eating animals and animal products because they have a lasting negative effect that ranges from cancer to heart problems to diabetes to autoimmune diseases like asthma, urticaria, and lupus, and can even promote memory loss like dementia. But that's a story for another time. We're talking about the blood type disease. The long and short of it, well, we've done the long, now we'll do the short. The short of it is, is the blood type di uh, diet, whether you're A, B, A, B, or O, plus or minus, it doesn't work. It's just a theory that doesn't have any real proof to support it. So please don't bother following it. Find a good way to have a diet that is rich in whole foods and based on plants. Now, if you still have to occasionally eat some animal products, so be it. But if you're going to do that, try either the Asian diet or the Mediterranean diet. That's it from me for this talk. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.